Hi guys and welcome to the next video of this entire series. In this video, I will be discussing how we can trace emails in Exchange Online using Message Trace. In last video, we discussed what is high risk delivery pool and how does it work. In this particular session, I will be discussing what is Message Trace and how we can initiate and analyze a Message Trace. I will be showing you how we can run Message Trace from classic Exchange Admin Center from modern Exchange Admin Center and from Security and Compliance Center. And then I will be showing you how we can initiate an extended message trace or EMT. So this is going to be a deep dive session on message trace. With the help of message trace, we can trace the emails. We can check the status of the emails, whether emails are delivered or they got failed how many emails we received in a particular time period or how many emails were sent out from our organization. An administrator can run message trace from Exchange Admin Center, from Security and Compliance Center and from PowerShell as well. First, we will understand how we will run message trace from Exchange Admin Center. We can run message trace from new Exchange Admin Center and from classic Exchange Admin Center as well. We will go to Mailflow and then message trace. The first column within message trace is date range. By default, it will show 24 hours. If we select 24 hours and if we select search, it will give us the details of the emails which were sent and received within our organization in last 24 hours. Here we can see the date, the sender who sent the email, the recipient email address, subject of the email, and the status of the email, whether the email was delivered, it got failed, it was marked as spam, or it was sent to quarantine portal. In the same way, if we select 48 hours, and if we run message trace, it will give us details about all the emails which were sent and received within our organization in last 48 hours. Same way, we can select seven days. Custom is to select the date range. When you select custom, after that we select start date and the end date. Now the message trace limitation is that we can run message trace for last 90 days. If you want to look for an email that you have received or sent before 90 days, unfortunately we will not be able to run message trace for that particular email because the limitation of message trace is that you can run it only for 90 days. So when we select custom, we can select the start date, for example, 1st of June and today's date. The next tab within message trace is delivery status. Under delivery status, we will see multiple options. For example, all, delivered, failed, pending, expanded, quarantined, filter as spam and getting status. By default, it will show all. That means this will cover all these status. Delivered status will show the emails those were successfully delivered to the recipients failed will show the emails which were failed and were not delivered to the recipients pending will show the email that is being attempted or re-attempted expanded status will show the emails those were sent to a distribution group and was expanded so that it can be delivered to the members of the group Quarantined status will show the emails. Those were moved to the quarantine. Filtered as spam status will show the emails. Those were filtered as spam emails by spam filtering policy and were moved to the junk folder of the recipients. Getting status will show emails. Those were recently received by Office 365, but as of now, there is no status data is available for those emails. So as per the requirement, you can select any one of these options and then you can run message trace. Next option is message ID. This is the internet message ID that is found within an email header. If you want to run a message trace report for a particular email, we can collect message ID for that email from the email header and we can run message trace on the basis of the message ID. If you want to search emails on the basis of a sender, you can select sender and then you can add the email address or the display name of the user as a sender. If you want to run message trace on the basis of recipient, you can click add recipient and then you can select the email address. If you want to run this message trace for an external user for that, 
you will be typing the external email address in this box and then we will click check names and then click OK. Because the external users will not be reflecting within your gal or in global address list. So that is the reason for external email addresses. We type their email addresses next to check names. Extended message trace is a message trace report that is very useful in terms of diagnostic purposes. To run extended message trace report, select custom and then select start date. To run extended message trace report, always select date range of more than 10 days from today and then select end date. So today is 15th of June, so I will select first and let's go with today's date as end date. After that, you can select delivery status. Whether you want to run extended message trace for delivered emails, failed emails or for expanded emails. And then you can type the message ID if you want to run extended message trace report on the basis of message ID. Similarly, we can add add sender if you want to run extended message trace report on the basis of sender email address or on the basis of recipient email address. And while we will be running extended message trace, make sure you are selecting this option which says include message events and routing details with report. So that means when you will check this option, it will this particular extended report will have the entire information of an email. After that, you can select direction whether you want to run this report for inbound or for outbound emails. Inbound is the emails that you are receiving in your organization. Outbound is the emails that you are sending from your organization. If you know the client IP address of the sender, you can type the IP address here and you can even run message trace on the basis of client IP address. This is the report title. This is the default name which will be given to the report to the CSV file. If you want to change, you can change it to a random name as well. This is the notification email address. Once this extended message trace report is ready, this particular email address will receive a notification and from that notification this particular user will be able to download that report. If you leave it blank. In that case you can download those reports from this section which says view pending or completed traces. So if I run extended message trace, let me add one sender here. And let's click search. So now it says your message trace has been submitted. An email message will be sent to you when it's available. You can also check under the pending and completed traces to see the progress of the trace. So here I haven't added an email address for the notification. So now I will go to this section. And from here I can see all the reports that I have initiated. As of now, the status says not started. So this report is in queue and in a couple of minutes it will start. Once this report is completed on the right side here, you will get an option from where you can download this particular report. To run message trace report from new exchange admin center, we will go to mail flow and then we will go to message trace. Under default queries tab, we, we can see the default templates or the pre-built templates that you can use. For example, messages sent from my primary domain in the last day or messages received by my primary domain in the last day. All quarantine messages, all failed messages for last seven days. So if you want to run a message trace for any one of these conditions, you can select this template and you can run message trace. If you want to create your own custom queries, you can go to custom queries tab and then click start a trace. 